Good evening. Welcome to Longmeadow Community Television. Tonight we have a candidates forum for the select board elections coming up in June. Uh, we have four candidates running for two seats on the select board. Three of those candidates are joining us here tonight. Uh, this evening's format is I'm going to ask a series of questions of our members. They're going to each answer that question to, the, to how they want to answer that. And then we'll just go through that round. We're going to be here for about an hour. The goal of the show with LCTV is to help you uh, get to know the candidates a little bit better. So so tonight I want to welcome uh, Bill Lowe, uh, who's an incumbent, Mark Gold, who's an incumbent, and Mark Strange, who is a uh, challenger for the, the seats. Our other candidate uh, wasn't able to attend. So folks, how it's going to work is you get a minute and a half opening statement. We're going to start with Bill. So go right ahead and we'll, we'll get the show going. Um, I have uh, grew up in Longmeadow and I've been back here for about 30 years. So I think what that does is gives me the kind of the long metal mentality, at least that I, I thought that when I ran the first time. And the reason I ran the first time, I had some people approach me and ask me, I thought I, I could do some help with some problems that the town was dealing with. And in my first term, basically all of those issues we were able to solve. The uh, DPW, um, the uh, Senior Center, and a few other things. So running this time, because again, some of the residents in town asked me to continue because uh, they see me as kind of a kind of a, um, uh, a a steady influence. You know, I don't get too riled up about issues. I, I don't have an agenda other than making sure that the residents of the town that we make the right decisions for them and uh, issues are solved for their benefit. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Mark. Thanks, Paul. And I want to thank LCTV and you, Paul, for organizing and hosting the, this candidate's forum. I feel privileged to serve on the Long Meadow Select Board. During my service, I believe my contributions to the town have been measurable and positive for the community, from budget negotiations, water and sewer rate setting, to working to hold down the residents' tax bills. Over the course of this candidate's forum, you'll hear some of the many contributions I have made to the operational and financial stability of the town. You will also hear my in-depth understanding of the, and knowledge of the issues that the select board will face in the coming three years. And finally, you'll hear about the opportunities that are available for the town to continue to move forward over the coming years. Making these decisions over the next three years will require select board members with the knowledge and experience th that I bring to the position as well as the balanced perspective that I've demonstrated to the citizens of Longmeadow over these past several years. I ask for your support and your vote on June 11th. Thank you, Mark. Mark? <clears throat> Thanks, Paul. Hi, everyone. My name is Mark Strange, and I'm running for Select Board. <clears throat> uh, I also want to thank Paul and uh, Dave and, um, and Tracy and every, all the other folks here at LCTV for hosting tonight's event. I think it's a great forum for all of us to uh, present ourselves to the voting public so you can make an informed choice. Um, the question I get most when I'm talking to people um, about my candidacy is, why are you running? And the, the answer is, uh, is simple. It's, I feel like I can help and I want to help. Um, I'm the Director of Planning and Development for the Town of Agawam. Um, <clears throat> in that role, I oversee uh, programs involving community development, uh, economic development and planning, among others. I'm also uh, a licensed attorney. And as a municipal professional, um, I see good government every day. I know what it looks like, I know what it does, uh, and I have reference, reverence for good government. <clears throat> I live it every single day. And I look forward to bringing my experience uh, as a municipal professional um, uh, and my reverence for a good government to the Longmeadow Select Board uh, over the next three years and maybe beyond. Uh, my wife grew up in Longmeadow. She had a wonderful experience. Um, we're raising our kids now in Longmeadow, and uh, they're also having uh, what we hope to be a, a good experience, and we're tr trying to preserve that, um, not only for them as, and to their adult years, but also uh, for their children. And that's really my top goal as a select board member is to preserve our high quality of life. Thank you. Thank you Mark. Okay, so first question, um, and you hope you thought you were gonna get this one this evening. As a member of the Finance Committee, we discussed this a lot, but the select board two years ago or so formed a task force to deal with the 
upcoming tax rate uh, levy capacity of $25 a thousand. And what that means is obviously we cannot raise taxes two and a half percent a year. Um, what are your thoughts on how we're going to handle that um, uh, going forward? And have there been discussions about how we're going, or what are your thoughts about how that levy limit and how we're going to address it going forward? So let's ask that question. Is that that's the question. How are we going to handle that? For coming to, yep, for all of you. Yep. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, uh, although I am a, not a high tax advocate, I don't see, unless something changes drastically for this town, um, I don't see any way that we're going to be able to continue without um, uh, repealing the two and a half uh, legislation. It's just uh, we're going to hit the $25 a thousand uh, mark in probably three years, three maybe four, and um, with no, with no, not a lot of land in town to build more uh, housing. Uh, we're out of basically commercial space, and um, and the values of the houses in town have, have remained flat for many many years. If you look at towns more towards Boston, where the the uh, value of the homes, the assessments are very high. They also have very low tax rates. Um, it's, it's the exact opposite here. With flat values and increasing costs, which are beyond, many of which are beyond our control, um, health care, um, you know, salaries, union uh, issues, they're just uh, they're not going away. They're just going to continue to increase, and we're going to reach a point where we're going to have to we're going to have to raise we're going to have to uh, repeal two and a half. Okay. Mark. I, I think we're going to have to take a multi-pronged approach to, to solving this issue. Uh, the Prop 2.5 limits our tax rate at some point, but the, there are multiple ways of doing this. One is to clearly to reduce our spending, and, and I don't necessarily mean reduce services to reduce spending. We've already identified some things that we're working on. For example, if and I hope when we buy our streetlights, we'll be able to save the town maybe three or $400,000 a year, which will allow us another you know, partial year on growth. There may be some areas in town that are yet undeveloped that we can de develop. We're certainly going to look at, you know, what we might be able to do or might have to do to move some things out of tax rate and put them into, into fees. It really is the same pocket now that your taxes generally aren't uh, federally deductible anymore. Uh, but ultimately, we will also look to uh, see if we can't get a home rule or a local option to uh, override or, or change the artificial tax cap that's this $25 tax cap which was instituted in 1983 I think back then was that uh, 39 36 years ago nobody really anticipated the the changes in in uh, in, in taxes and what in value of, of properties so I think that the issue is going to be a multi-pronged approach which consists of new revenue and we're looking for new revenue uh, reduce spending in, in areas where it makes sense and where we can do that without impacting services and then ultimately if we need to we'll go back and look at a, a, a local override but in, in general I think it's going to be a combination of, of all three things. Thank you Mark. Mark? Yeah I agree with both both uh, Bill and Mark you know it's a um, <clears throat> I think ultimately if we if we cut to the very end we do need um, we are going to need some legislative uh, relief from the Prop 2.5 um, uh, levy ceiling. Uh, Long Meadow is in a unique, unique situation. Not only are we in the western part of the state, um, but we're also you know, predominantly residential. So we have issues in Long Meadow that not necessarily the other communities that are facing the levy ceiling, um, like Springfield and Holyoke, have. Um, uh, in, in the interim, you, know, you have to look at ways to mitigate costs and increase revenue. Um, in terms of increasing revenue, as these guys said, the, the town is largely built out. There aren't that many spots to um, expand uh, development. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's an open piece next to the shops uh, on Williams that could be developed. Um, there's other spots that are available. Um, one possibility is, is um, um, going up, going up, building up, but um, that's largely cost prohibitive. Uh, and and the, our parking is already an issue in those commercial areas, so uh, going out probably isn't isn't a likely um, likely course of action. And in terms of mitigating costs, we have to look at um, every budget year to year. I like uh, the fact that the, the the town manager and the select board 
um, or reducing uh, the the tax rate to um, you know to only increase it to two percent instead of two and a half percent. That's a good start. Um, you know, but every year we're going to have to look at uh, ways to to mitigate those costs. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is: What is, in your opinion, the top uh, priority for the town along Meadow today, and maybe the next three to five years down the road? I think the uh, one of the top priorities we're talking about right now it's it's how do you continue to balance the budget when when costs that are r largely out of our control keep going up. I think that, that uh, the health insurance issue last year went up something like 7% in one year. We can only raise taxes a maximum of two and a half and try not to even do that. So I, I think that the biggest, uh, the biggest problem going forward is going to be cutting spending where we can without cutting services, as Mark said. And, um, and otherwise, we're just going to have to, or two and a half is going to have to be repealed. I, I just, this is going to, it, it's, a, it's an issue every year, a very important one. But every year that goes by, it gets more and more important because we reach that, we reach the, the levy ceiling every year, we get a little bit closer. And with uh, property, tax, property uh, values not going up, not a lot of new construction, new building. Um, it's 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 a real dilemma. Um, the other things that we ha that are going to be important, at least in my mind, for the next year, are things like Wolf Swamp schools. Figuring out uh, if do we need a new middle school? Are we going to have one? Or are we going to have two? Um, uh, so there are a lot of a lot of important issues going forward, but balancing the budget is going to be key. Mark. I I think we, the, the most important issue for the town is the one that was mentioned in the first question, and that is how do we maintain the, the quality of life in town uh, under the limits of Proposition 2.5 and, and potential limiting of tax increases while maintaining the character of the town that continues to uh, a, attract people into the town, whether it's the schools or whatever it is. Uh, you know, I think one of my continual discussions I always have seems to be uh, you know, who's going to be around and who's going to want to buy, buy the houses in town when it comes time for the people in Long Meadow to sell their houses? And the issue is going to be, you know, we need to keep this town vibrant and keep attracting people in, into town. And to do that, we need to address the issue of maintaining the character of the town while we provide the, the, the services at the quality and, and, and it, with the, to the extent that we do now. You know, people in Long Meadow have come, for example, to uh, like their curbside trash pickup. You know, we could go to a system like Wilbraham where you have to buy it yourself, but it's, it, it would significantly change the character of the town. So it, it's how do we maintain the character of the town given the challenges of things like Proposition 2 and a half would be my answer. Thank you, Mark. Mark? Ditto. <laughs> I, I, I agree with both these guys. You know, I think the, the most pressing issue in town is um, our approach toward the levy ceiling. Um, I think that's, you know, the closer we get to it, the more, the more urgent it becomes. And we're still a few years away, so um, people are talking about it, but we haven't quite, um, I think, prioritized it to the point where it needs to be prioritized. Um, uh, you know, so uh, as Mark said, you know, the goal is to preser preserve our quality of life. You know, we, I think we enjoy high quality of life in Longmeadow. Um, and, you know, what can we do to preserve, to preserve that not only for our, for our generation, but for our future generations um, of our kids? <clears throat> um, and, uh, you know, Bill also talked about um, the Wolf Swamp Fields. Um, that kind of plays into um, the quality of life. Um, you know, those fields are used uh, so so often, and the, the 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 parking over there is terrible. It's a it's a it's a safety hazard. Um, that's certainly another another um, issue that needs attention soon. Hopefully this year. Um, the, the the pipeline, the proposed pipeline, is also a, a big issue. It also needs um, uh, immediate attention. Um, you know, but it goes back to the to the levy ceiling. That's really um, I think the most prevalent issue in town, and one that we need to really focus on. Okay, thank you. All right, so the next question, I'm gonna, I, I have a, a follow-up only because it's a, it's a related question. 
um, because you guys have all talked about you know the, the impact of what the uh, hitting that 25 bucks and it's going to be a combination perhaps of things like the home rule legislation which would allow us to exceed 25 dollars but with the town budget of being roughly 80 percent salaries and i'm being pretty broad and probably a little bit more when you include employee benefits and things like that is it possible to then not reduce services Right with a budget that that's that's that heavily dependent. I mean, we're salary dependent, as as most communities are probably. Is it possible to to have um, both? Like, because um, I, my my only point is I want voters to understand that you know we we have an issue and home rule legislation is going to be one of the things, but it might not work because that's not up to us here in town, right? So, is it possible to to have? Not cut services while we're trying to preserve the quality of life. I mean, it's a it's a tough issue. It is. It's, it's going to be very difficult. Um, the, the salaries, eighty uh, percent. I actually thought it was in the seventies, but you may be right. It's maybe. I'm, I'm mad in uh, benefits and things. But like it's that. Um, uh, though a lot of those expenses are out of our control, at least for now. You know, you have you have union contracts that are negotiated every year. You have you have um, uh, you have. Uh, what they call OPEB, you know, when somebody retires, you have other benef post employment benefits, health care um, that uh, but you can't do anything about now because under contract, these are things that people expected their whole working life. So you can't very well take that away. Um, I think that it's going to come a point where I always say that. You know, you can get a lot of good stuff along the way, but at some point down the road, it goes off a cliff. And uh, unfortunately, it could be, you know, five, ten years down the road, it's just that, oh, remember these things we promised you? Well, we can't do those anymore. I, I don't know how it's not sustainable if you can't uh, raise revenue. And, and the town's going to have a very hard time raising revenue. It's a ma matter of looking very carefully, surgically, I guess, at where can expenses be cut. I mean, I'm all for um, always giving the police force uh, what they need and the fire department what they need. Um, so you, you don't want to cut those, in my mind. So it's going to be hard. Mr. Gold? I, I think the answer is we can. We have not done it so far, we, but we can uh, handle a, the Prop 2.5 levy limit given the fact that we're 80% salaries. But it's going to take the cooperation of our of our employees, they're they're in this with us. I really believe that 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 that's the case, and we have to treat them that way. And I think that the, our employees will see that to make the town successful, to maintain their jobs, they're in this with us. The current paradigm is very unsustainable, in my opinion. The the paradigm that says you know everybody gets a, a 2.8 percent step plus a 2 percent cost of living for a five 4.8 percent pay increase every year. That, that's just not sustainable. Uh, what's going to be sustainable is, and, and is to start looking at this a different way. And I think sometimes you have to get down to uh, the crunch time in, or, in order to do that. You know, one of the things we've talked about doing is doing more outsourcing so that th that the people who are doing some of the jobs that we don't need highly trained local individuals to do come in and can do the work for us, and so now we're not on the hook for them for OPEB benefits and 7% a year increases or 5% a year increases, whatever it is. So I think if we shift the paradigm with our employees, we can do that. I just say parenthetically that, you know, I go back about five or six years ago, I remember, well, it may have been more than that, I think you may have been on the select board at the time, we had one of these little get-togethers and we made a, plan, a decision that we wanted to uh, strategically have a year with zero increases. And we were able to do that. And I think that's the kind of thing it takes. Thank you, Mark. Mark? Yeah, I, you know, without some sort of um, legislative amendment uh, to Prop 2.5, we are going to hit that. Um, and it, I think at that point, it's going to be uh, a matter of what services um, to cut uh, and what, what staff to cut. You know, I'm certainly not a proponent of cutting um, any, any currently employed staff. I think we should take a hard look at retirements um, when people are up for retirement and you know the, the silver tsunami is upon us. Um, so retirements are um, gonna be more prevalent now and into the next few years. Take a look at um, what we can do to maybe share services or, or outsource those services like we did with the assessor's office. Um, those are the little things that we can do um, to, to lower costs. 
you know, I think the town the town um, staff is is minimal. You know, I, uh, I I've spoken to most of the departments and like Agawam, you know, we, we run we run a skeleton shift, our skeleton uh, crew. You know, we're, we, we have minimal employees to do what we are supposed to do. Um, and teachers, teachers are, are extremely valuable. The, the teachers in our community are what make Longmeadow Longmeadow. That's why we came here to, to settle because the schools are so good. Um, and uh, along with the principals and the staff, you know, our experience at Wolf Swamp, Swamp has been outstanding. Um, so, you know, it's going to be difficult to look at, you know, what services to cut, um, what personnel to cut, and, you know, what we can um, offset the cost with uh, making the, the residents pay for, like trash pickup and things of that nature. It's going to be, there's going to be difficult decisions that have to be made. Okay. So next question is, um, without giving away collective bargaining secrets or anything like that, there's going to be a search for a new town manager at some point in time. What are the qualities that you're going to be looking for in the town manager um, as the applications come in? Without giving up any trade <laughs> secrets here or anything like that. So. Um, well, I think that um, what I, the current town managers, uh, I, I get along with Gray. He's a, he's a bright guy. I think he's done a, a pretty good job. The one thing that I would um, look for that's a little differently is somebody that can allocate responsibilities a little bit more and um, can be a little bit more flexible. Current town manager sometimes can be a little stubborn. Um, but the hardest things, in my mind, is for a person to get used to, probably any town, the mentality of the town. You know, it, it, it took our current t town manager, he, I guess he had a rough couple of first year, his first two years, and it took him a while to get the, get the mentality that, um, <coughs> that people me. in Longmeadow think like. And I, we're not unique in that. I think that any town, um, it takes a while to get used to how they think and what they, what they really want and do they like change and, and how do they like it and uh, do they not, people in Longmeadow don't like change, even sometimes if it's, if it's, if it's a good thing. Um, so I'd be looking for somebody that would work with the select board closely and um, have some flexibility uh, and listen to other people's opinions, but have a, have a very good grasp of uh, finance because that's going to be a big hurdle for us over the next couple of years. When I look at whether it's our town manager or any town manager or any executive, any agency, when one, when one executive moves out and another one moves in, the tendency is to find an executive who's incoming executives who has strengths where the outgoing executive is weak. And what you often do in that case is you miss the strengths of the outgoing executive because you're so focused on their weaknesses. So that being said, there, there are things that Stephen Crane's done well, and we want to maintain those things. Uh, and, and, but specifically, you know, the areas that I think we need to rebuild or to build on are, I'm, I use the term bedside manner, but really it's, it's public, internal public relations. It's relations with the people in the community. Getting out in the community, being, you know, we've, we've got a lot of individual is issues. I think every town, it's, you know, they say politics is local. In Longmeadow, it's down to the street size. You know, whether it's, whether Quinnetuck can close off their street or, you know, Redfern has a, a group home, and those are some of the issues that came up. So I think that that, issue of bedside manner, how you get along with the in, residents and, and a proven track record of doing that is important. The second thing that I, I put high on my list is experience of bringing in different kinds of revenue. You know, we've gone back a long, long time saying, you know, how can we find new sources of revenue? And when we talk to our department heads, primarily they say, you know, we're not entrepreneurial. That's not the nature of our training and our business. And so to bring in somebody who can help us identify things, whether it's putting in town-wide town Wi-Fi that brings in revenue for something or something else that gives us supplemental sources of revenue, those would be the issues that I'd be looking for. Thank you. Mark? Yeah, and I, I want to say um, that, that Stephen Crane's done a great job, and I think it's a big loss for the town. Um, I've had the privilege of working with Stephen on certain projects um, and during, as my role in Agawam, and Stephen is proactive, uh, he's articulate, um, and he does, does a great job. You know, talking about um, a, a perfect town manager, there's no such thing, um, obviously. But Stephen did an outstanding job, so we, if we can find somebody 
um, with um, the professionalism um, and the work ethic uh, as Stephen Crane, I think be, we'd be well off. As these guys said, obviously some um, experience with um, bringing in new revenue, um, experience with uh, facing the levy ceiling. It's gonna be difficult because I think we're, we're the, the only town really um, in serious danger of hitting the levy ceiling. What I would like to see if, if I get on the select board is somebody that I can talk to, um, somebody who'll listen, um, somebody who can manage the department heads and keep them happy. Um, I think you know a relationship between the select board and the town manager, an, an amicable one, is, is extremely um, important. Um, it sets the tone for town politics and town government. Um, so I'd be looking for somebody who is professional and diligent and intelligent, um, but also who is easy to get along with. Thank you. Um, next uh, question is about, and you guys hit on this a little bit through your answers, uh, communication. There was, we've had a couple of town meetings that were called by citizens' petition, and sometimes there, there's a disconnect between our boards, uh, not just the sector, but boards in general and, and the populace. How would you go about trying, do you think communication is an issue with the public? Do you think they understand what the select board's doing, and do you think there's a, a need to have better communication, and how would you go about doing it if you think so? Uh, there's definitely needs to be better communication. I, I, as much as we c can say, well, you've got to watch the meetings or you've got to come to the meetings or read the minutes, people in, in the, have a lot of other things to do in their lives. So I think what happens, or at least what I've heard from residents, is uh, we didn't know about that or they didn't fully, weren't fully informed about some issue. And so there's definitely a communication problem. How we, how we deal with that um, you know, maybe we'll have, we'll have newsletters that discuss the issues, um, but there's definitely an issue with communication. It's, it's, I would say to the residents, you, you know, it's kind of up to you a little bit to stay informed, uh, watch the meetings, come to committee meetings, come to the select board meeting, watch the me meeting. You can see them on YouTube. And um, other than that, it's very difficult for the select board to, other than what they're already doing, trying to manage the affairs of the town, to find another way to put information out. And we already feel like we, we're doing as much as we can. Clearly, we're not. Um, and so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult question. I'm not really sure. Thank you. Mark? Uh, I think Bill's got a, a, a pretty good understanding of the situation right now in, in, in that uh, you know, and a perfect example, we had a budget form and nobody showed up, a public budget form and nobody showed up. So it, it's not that we didn't try, we did. Now, did we try enough? You know, we need to, you can never do enough communications. We can always communicate more. You know, our, our town website is loaded with information. We've got a town Facebook page and we put things out on Facebook page. So it, it's out there for people who want to do that. And what we've got to do is make sure that we're using everything possible, whether it is, you know, Facebook or website or, you know, we, for a while we were using the, the reverse 911 and people were complaining, why am I getting these phone calls? And, and so, the, you know, I'm not blaming people. I think people get as informed as they want to get. And when there's a situation that, that impacts them, they do get more informed. Does the select board need to do more? We need to do everything available, including, you know, social media to beyond what we may do right now. But for the most part, it's not from a lack of effort. Some of it's from a lack of having the resources in the town or the, the facilities in town to, to, to pull people into the, the communications. But I, I really believe that you know, if people, you know, th that the select board's not being closed, we're doing everything we can and we'll continue to do that. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, you know, we, we struggle with this issue in Agalam as well. How do you reach all the residents, um, people, uh, a lot of people who are in, in my particular demographic, you can reach on Facebook. Um, so with respect to the Longmeadow Select Board specifically, um, I think a regular newsletter, some, something, some uh, form of communication uh, on social media where people um, can go and they know it's gonna be there on a regular basis as an update as to what's going on in town. Um, um, that's, again, that, that, would, that would hit one demographic. Um, the, the older folks, at least in Agawam, tend to watch the local community television. Um, that's certainly another way, you know, uh, things that you're doing, Paul, and, and some of the other people with the programming, I think that's extremely important for um, 
kind of the, the, the older demographic, but also maybe a, a regular meeting at the senior center, particularly when the new one is built, um, inviting the seniors and the public in general to come and ask questions. Okay, thank you. Um, one of the items that's gonna be coming up is um, uh, trash and potential fee for trash, which means that the money that's being spent now stays in the budget to pay for other things, which helps us avoid that levy limit, but then there's potential for fee for trash. How do you feel about that? Well, um, there, there, there is in a way now. I mean, if you follow the bylaws and you have a, whatever it is, a 35 or 40 gallon um, trash barrel, anything over that or, or over a certain weight <clears throat> should be put in the town bags, the blue bags, which, which you pay for. I don't know any other way around that. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I'd hate to see a, a fee over and above that put on trash. I don't think we really need to do that. By instituting this, uh, this uh, a common uh, trash container that be issued to everyone in town we've talked about, um, then uh, um, we will, and so discouraging people from overloading their trash, having two or three barrels out there, having a hundred gallon barrel, what have you, those actually, the, the trash company charges us for, for, the, for those. And so if we get that in line, we figure we'll save about $40,000 uh, 40, a year in trash uh, in fees, and, and we are gonna do that. We are gonna institute that program. Um, so I don't see, at least in the near term, a, a, another fee coming on. Yeah, I, I, I guess fundamentally I oppose a, a, a separate trash fee. I, I think it's part of the responsibility of the town, in, at least in the town of Longmeadow, everybody who's moved here so far, people who are contemplating moving here, that you get curbside tr trash pickup in Longmeadow. And, and frankly, I don't think it's gonna be necessary. Now, yes, we could do that. That's certainly a way of moving something out of a tax base into a fee base. But you know, I, I, I actually negotiated one of the trash pickup, you know, what's called the hauling contracts. We, I was in the team that negotiated with Longmeadow. I understand what the components are and wh what it means and, and how much we save by having you know, trash done the way it's done and without a separate, without a separate fee. As I said, I, you know, I, I, I spoke earlier, answer to one of my earlier questions about, about Longmeadow versus Wilbraham and, and you know, there, you know, it, there is a trash fee. It's a pretty substantial trash fee. You know, I, I think there's ways of doing it. Uh, Bill Lowe indicated that the select board's already looking at things now in terms of uniform trash pickup holding down the, the rates we have. I think it ought to be a, if you will, a last resort in terms of what we need to do to keep the town and the rest of the services of the town running. I would not like to see a trash, a separate trash fee implemented unless absolutely necessary. Thank yeah, you. I mean, I, I agree. You know, nobody wants to pay more out of pocket um, for anything, per, per, particularly for, for trash pickup and recycling. Um, you know, I, I agree with Mark. There's, if there is a way to avoid it, um, and I think there probably is a way to avoid it uh, and then in the near term, um, it's one of those items, one of those line items that'll get a lot of conversation as we get closer to the levy ceiling. If we don't get um, legislative relief at the state level, um, it's one of those line items that's going to get a lot of discussion about, um, you know, putting the uh, the burden on onto the onto the user. Although with uh, with the the disruption in the recycling industry right now, um, you know that that could be uh, a monkey wrench uh, in the in the plans for next year, maybe even next year. I know East Long Meadows having some issues um, with um, increased expenses. As our as is Agawam, so um, it's coming. And it's 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 an issue to look at. Um, but yeah, of course, we don't want to uh, impose a, a, any additional fees in, a, above and beyond what we already pay. Okay, thank you. All right, next question, kind of a little esoteric question out there. How do you measure success on the select board as a select board member? <clears throat> One of the for me, it, um, I have some some projects that I wanted to get done when, as I came in, and Pretty much every one of those has been accomplished, and it's not simply because of me. We happen to have a, a select board right now that um, we have more 5-0 votes than I think I've seen in the past, 5-0 or 4, which means we're, we're working better together, and we're all kind of on the same page, uh, on the right <coughs> side of issues. Um, so uh, I, th I think that's one, one, of the re one of the ways you can that I measure success is uh, how how many things are we accomplishing without like arguing with each other and um, fully vetting an issue 
Um, and then uh, also when we put together the town, the uh, warrant, or the articles on the warrant, you know, the more of those that pass and aren't as controversial is also, I think, a measure of success. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Mark? Yeah, it's interesting. I, I get uh, feedback every two weeks from the, our, our select board meetings, and I'm not sure, quite sure why I get them and not everybody else, or maybe they do and don't talk about it, but I get emails fairly frequently from people after every select board meeting, and I welcome them because they tell me what, what we've done well, and they also tell me what we, what we haven't done well, and I think the, the level of satisfaction of our citizens is a critical means of seeing, is the select board conducting the business that the people want to see. Now, you know, we can also have, key indicators, if you will, of, you know, are the budgets being are balanced? Are we doing it without having a two and a half override? Or are they flying through town meeting? Do we have acrimonious town meetings or harmonious town meetings? And do we have acrimonious or harmonious select board meetings? But ultimately, it's, you know, the, the town, which is a, a collection of a whole bunch of different groups of people and, and a group of, uh, you know, people as, as a whole that, that need to feel that, they're getting out of their government what they want. Their roads are plowed, their streets are paved. Uh, that they're, they're, They call the police, the police answer. You know, I, we had a fire, an unfortunate fire on uh, uh, last a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and, and, you know, one of the neighbors there called me and, sa and said, you know, I, how do I thank the fire department? I mean, they didn't, weren't able to help the house that burned down, but they sure helped my house, which was nearby. And, and so it's that kind of thing that is the way I measure success of the select board. Mark, I'm asking future tense. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, um, you know, I liken it to a, a football referee. So if you're watching a football game, if you, if you watch football, or any sport really, and you don't notice the referees, you know they're doing a good job. You only notice the referees when they, when they, uh, when they, they screw up. And I think I, I liken that to both the school committee and the select board. You know, our jobs as selectmen are to take care of the town's business um, so that other people don't have to worry about it. So if we're, if we're cruising along and, um, you know, the average resident doesn't, you know, isn't aware of any problems with the select board, I think you're doing a good job. Uh, when people's lives get disrupted, when people's quality of life gets disrupted, that's when, um, you know, all eyes get focused on the select board and the school committee. Um, so if we're doing our job, it's, it's a very boring time in town. Agreed. Okay. Um, so my next question is, what would you like to see other than budget? Because we know budget constraints can be an issue. But other than budget, what would you like to see achieved over the next three years? Because it's a three-year term. But what, what would be the thing that's the thing you'd like to see achieved in town? Um, there's, some, there's a few projects that I, I, I'd like to see done. Um, the Wolf Swamp School uh, fields are one of them. Although the other thing I'd like to see, and, and it's going to be difficult to do, is right now we have... In bonding, we have something like $42 million worth of debt. And we have these other projects coming up. The DPW is going to add 20 and the, and the senior center number 14. And if we have another school, I mean, within the next six to seven years, we could have $100 million worth of bonding debt. So that's, um, that's going to be, I think, very controversial. And that's one of the reasons that some of these, some projects going forward are not going to be approved um, if they if they require bonding. Uh, for instance, there's a proposal on the, on the table to redo the Wolf Swamp Stools with, uh, with bonding, it'd be about a million five. But the good thing about that is that's an opportunity for the citizens of Longmeadow to vote on it, whether they want. I think that most important to me is when we have really controversial issues, that we find a way to get it to the town residents to vote on rather than, I don't think our, our, uh, we are in a position to make these kinds of decisions. We make policy decisions and set the town meeting and, and, and put the articles in the warrant. Um, but if it's an important issue like bonding a major amount of money for evens for something we know needs to be done, I'd rather have the citizens of Longmeadow vote on it. Thank you. Mark? You know, we, we have a lot of irons in the fire, as they say right now. And I certainly think that we, I, I'd like to see them completed. Uh, the construction of the DPW facility, I was at that site just the day before yesterday, and it's still all, all sand. There's nothing there. You know, it's, it's going to take a lot to bring that 
not only build it, but get it started. And, and that and the adult center bring them in on budget as expected and something that the town citizens want. But beyond that, you know, we need to come to a, a decision on our middle schools. And you know, we're going to get, I hope, some help from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, whether it's one school, two schools, new schools, renovation schools. Uh, but I also have some other projects that aren't as, you know, a, a, as visible or as, as large, but they're nevertheless important. This idea of, you know, we put forward and it's going to be on the warrant this year of, of purchasing our streetlights. That's a major project that can save the town hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. We projected maybe as much as 300000 or $400,000 when the, when the bond to buy those is paid off. You know, it's not going to be done without a lot of effort and work. And, uh, you know, I'm particularly passionate about that, so I'd like to do that. But I think we ought to also ought to look at things like putting in community Wi-Fi, which will provide service for the community and potentially revenue for the town, and something that may not be you know, applicable to everybody, but everybody in the town talks about looking for a dog park. You know, can, we, is the, can we find something like that? So it, from, from the major projects, you know, the multi-million dollar middle schools all the way down to a dog park, there's plenty to be done. Thank you, Mark. Mark? Yeah, and just quickly, I look forward to um, both the Senior Center um, and the DPW building um, being completed in the next three years. I think that's going to be um, a couple of great additions for, for, the, uh, for the town. The senior, the senior Center will be right down the street from my house, so I'm particularly looking forward to that. Um, I think the Wolf Swamp Road fields uh, safety improvements have to get done. Um, I have two kids, uh, 10 and a six year old. They don't really use those fields right now, but w I, we drive by quite a bit. Um, and there's always events there, lacrosse, soccer, what have you. And it is, it's dangerous. It's dangerous for the pedestrians. It's dangerous for the drivers. Um, something needs to get done uh, with respect to the Wolf Swamp field. So I look forward to that getting done in the next three years. And then as Mark said, something has to get done. Uh, we have to move forward in some way in the middle schools. Um, they're, they're so old and um, they're not, they're not contemporary. You know, I think the kids are missing out on an educational experience by not being um, plugged in the technology. Um, I think there's a lot of advantages to be, to be had um, through that. So whether it's one school or two school, I think we should um, you know, see what, the, see what the, the public, see what the public says. And, um, um, but you know, that's not gonna get done in the next three years, but I'd like to see some progress. Okay, thank you. Um, I've got a couple more questions uh, as we get towards wrapping up. Um, there was an article in the Republican Mass Live that Longmeadow was number one <laughs> in tax rate, right? So that's not a good number one to have, but we were number one in tax rate. But do you believe that we're delivering the quality of services attached to be that number one ranking in terms of highest tax rate in the Commonwealth? I mean, are, uh, listen, I think Longmeadow is a great place. You guys have mentioned it. You can have an ambulance to your house in four minutes or less. You have a cop car even quicker. So there's not many communities you can do that. Do you, do you believe that we're delivering the quality of life that we, you know, for that, for that privilege of paying that tax rate? I, I personally do. I mean, I, I do not like the fact that we have the highest tax rate in the state. Um, and with, up, with very little ability to control that going forward because of the issues we've already talked about. But I, I think that, I mean, I, personally, I'm very happy with the services I get in town. Um, I had a, a, an issue at my house six months ago or so where I, I had a, a, a flood in my basement, and I had the fire department, the DPW, I mean, they were there like that to, to help me out, pump out the basement, and um, I just had made one call, and you know they were all there. Um, and I don't think it's because of my position. I think that they really, if you talk to anybody, <laughs> I think if you talk to residents in town, they would, I think they would tell you that they're, they're pretty happy with the services. We have great school system. I was reading the, the, the high school rankings in the state and in the, and in the country the other day and, and were very highly ranked. Um, so, and everyone talks about this, 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 how good the schools are all the time and the sports teams and, and um, you know, it's still a small New England town with, by the way, the largest green, I think, in the Northeast, something like that. Um, so I, yeah, do I think that the, the, that the citizens get what they're paying for in taxes? I, absolutely. It's too bad to tax the rate so high, but that's the way it is right Thank now. Thank you, Bill. Mark? Yeah, Paul, I want to. I, I saw that article too that said Longmeadow had the highest tax rate in, in the Commonwealth, and we do. But people need to understand uh, if you look at the Department of Revenue, and I've done that, we have the 43rd highest average tax bill. 
So what does that mean? That means you take, uh, you know, the average taxes paid by the residents, and we have, prime, you know, the average value of our house is three hundred sixty-one thousand. I guess this year, three hundred sixty-two thousand dollars in Longmeadow. That you know, you take that three hundred sixty-two thousand dollar house, and 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 you put that, compare it to other, other communities in the Massachusetts, and they're paying the 43rd highest tax rate. So, you know, you take, and anybody who's watching this, take your house and put it in Newton, Wellesley, Weston, you know, King, you know uh, Concord, all the, you know, your value of your house is gonna be more, but your taxes are gonna be far more too. So the, the question shouldn't be, are we, you know, are we getting the value out of being the number one highest the highest tax rate in the community. It's do people in town feel that they're getting value for the taxes they pay? You know, whether you're the highest tax rate or in our case, the 43rd highest tax bill. And, you know, I believe that they are, but more importantly, I believe that the people believe they are because there are people moving into town and there aren't houses in town being unsold for five years or three years or two years because there's, there is demand. So, uh, you know, it's it's, shown by the demand from outside groups and from individuals who live in town that this is a desirable place to live and they are getting their money's worth out of the taxes. Thank you, Mark. Mark? Yeah, I agree with both these, these guys. Um, we're very happy living in Longmeadow. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, and, and, and we're very happy with our quality of life. And, um, you know, I think, you know, what it does, being the highest tax rate town in, uh, in Massachusetts, it put, puts pressure. It puts pressure on um, the town officials to maintain that quality of life. Uh, so, you know, as we're as we're approaching the levy ceiling, that's when things are going to get really interesting. Um, you know, I, it's it's going to be a difficult issue because you know we're we're used to the things that we're talking about. You know, public safety response times, um, the trash pickup. You know, our lovely neighbors, um, the great schools, and. Um, you know, I'd love to maintain that indefinitely. Um, so, you know, to your question, um, you know, I don't like paying taxes either, like Bill said, you know, nobody does, but you wanna make sure you're getting value for it, and I think we are. Good, so the next question is really just open-ended. You guys got a minute and a half closing uh, remark coming up. Is there something that you wanna say that I haven't asked you that isn't part of your closing remarks? I'm giving you the softball if you want to give a message before your closing remarks of something that I might not have covered that you wanted to talk about, please do. <clears throat> um, I would say that uh, when I came into this position, when I ran, part of the reason was that I had some people approach me and thought I might be able to help solve some issues that were, the town was facing. And what I did was, because of my men the mentality I have be growing up in town and living here for so long, you know, I moved here when I was one years old and uh, went through the whole school system and went to college out west, but came back and I've been here for, for over 30 years now, is, is how Longmeadow, uh, how, how people think. One of the first things that I noticed while I was, before I was even elected was the Wolf Swamp schools being looked at for a DPW site. I, I went to the town manager and to some people in the select board, I said, why is that on the list? Well, because it's, we own it and don't, it's not going to cost anything. It's illogical. I said, they don't want it. Well, that's crazy. I mean, they, that's the best place for it. They don't want it. It's a waste of time. <clears throat> and I bring that mentality to every issue that I, I've been looking at. That, the senior center, the one mistake I think I made with the senior center, there is a dog park, by the way. It's at Bliss Park. <clears throat> I want to put the senior center. I saw uh, initially a drawing of a senior center right there where all those trees are dying. And I, thought, I thought it was an improvement, <coughs> not knowing, because I don't have a dog, that people like to walk their dogs around there. So that's the one, one mistake I've made uh, during these three years. But generally, I, I think I bring the, the, the long meadow being long meadow kind of mentality to the town. And um, I think uh, that's what people like. Thank you, Bill. Mark? Thank you. Yeah, Bill, I just kind of want to say that he, he, some of the people call me are the, the, the residents of, Con, of uh, Bliss Road who live, who back up to that illegal dog park, and <laughs> they differ with you, I think. So that's part of the issue why we need a dog park. But, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm just prepared to stand on my record. I think I've, I've, I've demonstrated that I work hard. More, most importantly, I do my homework. I, I, as, as prepared or more prepared than anybody else who walks into that, that room. I've 
you know, go out and make the field trips and walk through and, 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 and look at the, the phone poles that were being asked to move or the, uh, you know, or, or the roads that were being asked to, to, to dig up. Uh, you know, and, and so I, I think that that's something that I really want to put out there for people to, to think about. It's, it's the judgment, the balance, uh, listening, listening, and listening. Being able, willing to listen, go places, talk to people, that's something that I, I really believe is, is important in the select board's job. And to some degree, and to push back. I think to the, the issue of should, should people you know, just be a rubber stamp as the select board, the answer is absolutely not, because then we're not necessarily, necessarily representing the people. I think there's a, a value to questioning, and that doesn't mean questioning just for the sake of questioning, but it really is questioning for the sake of making sure we've all done our homework and, and done it right. A perfect example of that is, you know, when the DPW wanted to buy a, a, sn a snowplow truck and a couple of us started asking questions and we found out, gee, there's one available for $100,000 less. Thank you, Mark. Mark? Yeah, I, I just, uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank all the people that have reached out um, to help with my campaign, uh, people that have been supporting uh, my efforts. You know, my wife, up until now, my wife and I really are homebodies. You know, we, we, we uh, like to be involved, I like to stay, stay apprised of what's going on in town, but, you know, we, we're, we're homebodies. So this has been a whole new experience for me, and it's been one that's been fabulous. Um, I feel a lot more connected to the community, um, even more than I did before. And I just want to thank everybody for their support. Okay. And as I said, that was my softball. You guys now get your closing remarks, a uh, minute and a half. Um, and maybe if you need to go a little bit longer, I'll let you go a little bit longer. We'll start with Bill. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> I would say that, uh, so I'm running again, again because I had some people approach, not I, I want to run, I want to continue to serve, but I had people approach me and ask me to, if I would, wouldn't continue because I'm, I, I maintain that mentality, long middle mentality, long meadow stain, long meadow. <coughs> Um, how do you get certain projects done um, w without too much disruption? I think a good example is the DPW. I had been pushing for the, its location now for a while because it would be out of the way. Um, the DPW should have been redone over 30 years ago. And the, not that some select board didn't try, uh, but the town kept voting, voting it down because there was no good location for it. They don't want it. Everyone wanted to stay where it is. Well, it can't stay where it is. It's in a floodplain. Um, I don't know if people realize how challenging it would be to rebuild that there, but it would be very challenging. Um, so that, so I, I, I want to continue to bring that, that kind of normalcy and long middle thinking to the select board. Um, and, and the other thing I do is I don't come to the select board with any particular agenda. Um, I look at the problems and try to solve them in the best way I can that would be a benefit to the community. And um, I ask the people to vote so I can continue to do that. Thank you. Bill, Mark? Yep. Uh, again, I want to thank LCTV and you, Paul, for organizing and hosting this, this forum. Uh, as you've heard tonight, I'm presenting myself to the voters of Longmeadow for re-election to the select board. As a member of the select board, my commitment and work on behalf of the citizens of Longmeadow have been on display at least twice every month for the last eight, eight years. In both select board meetings and the numerous other sessions I participate in, I've demonstrated an in-depth knowledge of the issues that we face and know the town and the select board will face, as well as the work ethic that I have, the work ethic that it takes to get the details on the issues we may not yet be aware of. Most importantly, I've shown through my actions that I have the judgment you expect from your select board members to act on the, that knowledge and that work ethic. I'm committed to continue to work on behalf of and for the betterment of the citizens of Longmeadow. Even having implemented the initiatives we discussed earlier tonight, there are advances yet to be achieved, and I ask for your vote to allow me to continue this work on your behalf for the next three years. So please vote for me, Mark Gold, on June 11th. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I want to thank you too, Paul. It's nice to get a chance to talk to you a little bit. I've heard good things about you, and it's uh, they, they're all they're all true. <laughs> um, so you you've heard us um, jabber on quite a bit. So I just want to I just want to uh, implore uh, anybody who's watching to come out and vote on June 11th. 
Um, I'd be humbled if you uh, voted for Mark Strange for select board. And I have to do one thing before we go. I have to say hi to my wife, Katie, and my uh, son, Sam, and my daughter, Sophia. I love you guys. Awesome. Thank you guys. First of all, thank you for coming in. I know you took time out of your schedule. I appreciate it because I think what you guys have all talked at a really great level for the voters to understand where you stand on the issues. And I think you've given them some really good insight about what your thought process is. So thank you for coming. I, uh, I appreciate it and I think the town appreciates it as well. Folks, you have to vote. There's, uh, there's going to be issues on the ballot. Uh, you've got school committee seats and so forth that are running. But uh, if you don't vote, you can't complain. And that's my, my slogan. So go vote June 11th. You have a selection. You've heard these folks. Um, go reach out to them if you have other questions on what they said. But thank you for watching. And thanks again to LCT LCTV for putting this together. Have a great day. Good job, guys.